nearly every aspect of modern life involves interacting with cloud technology, whether as a consumer or an IT professional. On the consumer side, a reduction of physical media, such as CDs and DVDs and video games, have led to the rise of on-demand streaming services. This requires remote storage options that can support large amounts of data to be delivered accurately and immediately. In the IT field, advancements in AI, machine learning, Internet of Things uh, compatibility have driven enterprises to seek the agility and flexibility that the cloud offers. And speaking of agility and flexibility and developing that, what does that mean for careers in cloud engineering? Joining us to discuss whether it's Adora uh, Uodu, who is a software engineer and an author. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Good morning to you. Thank you. Yeah, so you have an interesting journey here with yeah. respect to you are pretty much a cloud evangelist so <laughs> telling, me, <laughs> telling people that they should get into cloud engineering and so on. Uh, so tell us your story. How did you get into it? Um, so I got into cloud because I joined a company that Is it, allowed that, that, that me to build. Right. Yeah, so Prior to that, I used to be an Android dev and a full stack um, for developer. For our viewers, dev is developer, Developer, right? okay, yes. Cool. Right. Uh, so I wanted something more interesting. And then around that time was when I got the offer to join Microsoft. So it made sense. Yeah. And apart from the fact that it was a big company, I was really interested in the kind of technology that I would be building, mm. which was the, met the metaverse, basically mixed reality technology. So I got in there. Knowing about AR, VR, because I mean, I was already sort of working in that space. I had built some AR apps at the time, AR Android apps. And then I got in and I was working on devices. But you know when you just hear some of your colleagues talking about these things that you know nothing about? And it seemed interesting. So um, I started trying to find my way in, took some boot camps, asked to like ask them to give me work that was cloud related so that I you know did more of that yeah. and that was sort of how my career segued into that great stuff so i mean okay so obviously microsoft connection so you talk a lot about azure right yeah. but so but whether it's azure uh, Google Cloud, um, Amazon Web Services, the skills are the skills, right? So when you talk about career opportunities here, regardless of the platform, that's the way in. Is that, is that, is that right? Yeah, and even beyond these three, there are still like top ones when you think about IBM or Oracle and DigitalOcean and other ones. Yeah. So the main thing I tell people is like when people even ask me, oh, so for example, I've read your book and I'm interested in getting into cloud, how do I get Tell into us. that. Go ahead. Yeah, that, um, that the, the first question. thing would be, I would say, to learn the fundamentals of computing and how computers work. Because the cloud is basically a network of computers. So yeah. you're going to be dealing with a lot of computers. And if you don't understand how computers work fundamentally, you would struggle a lot. Mm -hmm. So learn about networking, learn about the cloud, you know, learn about computers, data structures, the way the internet is structured, security is an important thing as well. Yeah. You know, so these basic things that you that you can find courses to take on online to help you learn. And then you can now decide that, oh, I want to learn a particular cloud provider because at the end of the day these providers are important because you're going to be working in the context of one of these things either aws or azure or gcp or something yeah. but if you don't know the fundamentals first it's like building a house on a foundation that's not so great at some point your house would sink or collapse. something yeah. yeah yeah all right what about the indigenous players because every with all the companies we've mentioned now the azores the the, the the ibms the oracles of the world are all foreign firms yeah um we i think it was a month or so ago we've we've looked at um cloud indigenous cloud computing firms that are popping up here it does is that more opportunities for folks like yourself or the, who wants to come into this into this field to get jobs for instance well, what's your thoughts on the indigenous cloud players in nigeria yeah i believe so i mean i only know of one that's yeah. um africa data center right we covered I we think. covered their launch yeah we did yeah, yeah, yeah so i know and it's nice because i mean at the end of the day all these other companies that are creating these cloud computing opportunities you have to you know apart from the fact that you have to compete globally yeah um they are outside right. right so having these indigenous platforms here is not only good for the people that want these opportunities but good for us as a country yeah, itself yeah, so yeah. it's interesting to see and i hope more pop up eventually but, uh, yeah, another one is cassie cloud i think yeah, we also record their, their launch as well so so that's that's encouraging is remote work if you know about the jackpot <laughs> <laughs> the, the jackpot thing where everybody wants to uh, for our mm. viewers that's colloquial you know yoruba language for for leaving um is remote work the I guess biggest um, 
pro uh, or when you talk about advantages of working in cloud computing that you can that comes to mind when you think about the field I don't think remote work is an advantage for working in cloud computing. Okay. I think cloud computing has empowered remote work. So I sort of think it's the other way around. Okay, okay. Because, I mean, I'm in Lagos, I have a bunch of team members in Dublin. I have some in Redmond. I'm able to collaborate with these people because there's no server in Lagos somewhere that is in my house that right. I have to go to the office to use and they don't have to come there to use it as well. So. Being able to have that network of computers, like I called it, and for everyone to be able to connect to these computers via the internet and do whatever work we have to do is what is empowering remote work. So I think it's the other way around. Mm. However, I know that there are many remote opportunities for people doing cloud engineering work, as well as even beyond remote. Like there's some people that get really amazing offers to be DevOps engineers or site reliability engineers mm. or security engineers or cloud software engineers, and that helps them relocate. So it goes both ways in my Great opinion. Stuff. <clears throat> what's the starter kit? Or oh, again, you've, you've written a book, I think you're writing a second one, right? On how yeah. to get into this. So what's the starter kit for someone who doesn't have a background? Because the, the word engineering might be a bit intimidating for some people. So what, what's, for, for hooks who read your book and I want to get into it, what's, what's, how do they get in there? I mean, first thing is to have a laptop and internet, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need a laptop, okay. Yes. All right, okay. Um, but I mean, beyond that, like I said, it's important to take these um, courses that could help you learn things. Um, I know that there are many, I know that there are cloud engineering courses, there are DevOps courses, cloud security, because at the end of the day, cloud engineering in itself is an umbrella term for different kinds of roles. It's like right. calling yourself a software engineer. Oh, right. You're a software engineer. What, what kind of you, software do you What are you, you doing? Right, right. Right. So you're a cloud engineer, meaning that you do some kind of engineering on the cloud. And I know that the term engineering might sound intimidating, so I'm going to break it down. So it's like you are able to, you know, design, plan, and build, you know, Think about creating applications, creating and maintaining applications that would run on the cloud. That's the simplest way to put it. Mm. So in whatever capacity you work in the cloud technically, whether you are doing site reliability engineering or you're doing security or you're doing DevOps or software engineering or other rules that exist, cloud architecture, for example, you are in some way under the umbrella of cloud engineering. So if you decide that that's a path that you want to take, then you should take courses, apart from learning the fundamentals, which I already talked about, and having a laptop and internet connection, right. you should take courses that you know would allow you get into this and i tell people it's really hard to find a cloud job especially now that it's even hard to find a job in the first place because right. of what's happening yeah. so telling a beginner to get into the cloud is going to be very difficult so i tell people if you are really interested in this thing get into the company that you'd like to work for through a role that is pretty close for example if you want to be um, if you're trying to get into cloud security, I think you can start with cyber security and then you can find your way in. Mm. If you're trying to get into all the DevOps or cloud architecture or software engineering on the cloud part of it, you can get into backend engineering. And then once you get some, because at the end of the day, some of these skills are transferable. Mm. Once you're a backend engineer, you've written code for a bit, you've had issues on the cloud that you've had to deal with, so yeah. you've you know, found your way in different things, then you can now decide that it would be easy to transition to a cloud role within a company than try to get it from outside. Great stuff. Look, we appreciate you coming on. We have I had <laughs> more uh, questions to ask you about government policy and how that fits in, but we run out of time. I have to have you back to talk more about this. Maybe when your second book comes out. Definitely. Uh, Dora Uwodo, <laughs> software engineer, author. Thank you so much for talking to us about cloud engineering. Really appreciate it. Thank you.